food! This is not the weirdest so week. Yeah, you can't get any better. Hello, welcome to Hawks Recap. Game number two is in the books of the regular season here. Blackhawks win 5-1 over the Blue Jackets. Keep the undefeated season alive. The 82-0 quest is still in full effect. 15 goals in their first two games, pretty darn good. 7.5 goals a game, you keep doing that the rest of the season, you're going to win a lot of games. Most importantly, though, I think is our defense still is only holding teams to one goal a game. You do that in itself, you're probably going to win a lot of games. So both things are kind of in effect, and it's been a great start for the Hawks so far. As you can see, I was at the game. It was an electric atmosphere. It was awesome. It was my first time back at United Center in about five-ish years. Uh, it's just been easier to see the Hawks play in other venues for me, just in terms of convenience, location, price, all, all of the factors. But to be back at the United Center is just... An experience in itself and it just starts right away that anthem is just unreal TV just doesn't do it justice I know the anthem has been in the news a lot lately but at the United Center when everyone's just standing and cheering and Jim Cornelison it just has a fantastic voice and just pumping out the lyrics and the organ playing and everything I mean I'm getting goosebumps you just forget about all the controversy you you truly do is just unreal and it's an experience that like ever anyone who is a hockey fan needs to experience at least once in their lifetime it is is just you just can't uh, describe it like i said tv just does not do it justice piggybacking off of that during the course of the game there were numerous standing ovations one for temi panarin making his first trip back to the united center after being traded in the off season Spent the last two years on the Hawks, obviously, but he got a very warm welcome from the crowd. That was awesome to see. And then the other standing ovation was for the one and only Eddie Olchek. He was in the building, and when he was shown on the Jumbotron, everyone just went nuts. It was awesome. Now let's get to the game a little bit here. Uh, it starts off really quickly. Ryan Hartman gets the puck. It's three-on-two situation. Backhands a pass across the ice, misses Schmaltz, Schmaltz is driving hard towards the net, winds up on Kane's stick, and he's one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, and he's, he's not going to miss that too often. He buries that top shelf, starts the game off with a goal within the first two minutes, right about the one-and-a-half minute mark. Schmaltz ends up getting kind of hurt on the play. They're saying upper body. He's not going to be making the the Canada trip for the next couple games. So we'll see how long this keeps him out. This is the second straight game, the only two games of the year. He's gone out both games at some point with, with some sort of injury. So we need him back because this team, this offense, even though they're scoring a lot of goals, they're noticeably better with him in the lineup. Blackhawks end up getting a power play uh, about six minutes into the first period, and they waste no time on that. Sharp puts the puck on net. There's a little bit of a scramble. Saad comes out with the puck and puts it in to up the lead to two goals. Quick start for the Hawks, and right now it's looking like we might get another 10-goal game. If you get a chance, look at the replay on this and watch Brandon Saad be able to dig the puck kind of almost Backhand toe drag it away from the goalie and then put it in the net. It's very, very skillful. It's it's something, if, if you haven't played a lot of hockey, you might not understand how difficult that is, how quick he does it in that situation. But that was a Im very impressive little display of skill from Brandon Saad to get that power play goal. Not only did we see two goals pretty much right away in this game from the Hawks, so they started off strong, but we also see a fight. Lance Booma steps in. I think Wingles got hit knee to knee. It was kind of hard to see. I didn't, I didn't really witness it all that well. But he steps in, takes exception to what happened to fight, and we, we get a nice Blackhawk victory in that regard. I mean, what more do you want to see in a hockey game? I mean, two goals right away, a fight. I, I, I almost... Debated just packing up and leaving right there. I was like, I, 
that's that's great. I don't need to see anymore. I came for what I needed. That was hockey. <laughs> the game would go into the first intervention with the Hawks leading 2-0, so not quite on that 10-goal pace. But the defense was playing fantastic. They were skating very well. They were shutting down any chances or rushes that the Blue Jackets were getting. If they did get shots on goal, and they had pretty much an equal number of shots as the Hawks, but all their shots seemed to be from pretty poor areas. So they weren't really all that dangerous. The defense, like I said, was just playing really well. And it showed on the scoreboard and the Hawks go into the second period with a nice little lead. Crowds into it, everything's looking good. As I mentioned in the last video, you cannot win games in the first period. The Blue Jackets come out in the second period alive. They're controlling the puck, they're pressing, they're getting the puck in the offensive zone, keeping it there. Building up momentum, it seems like they're probably going to be scoring a goal, cutting this lead down to one goal. But the Hawks kind of changed their strategy a little bit. They changed how they play. Instead of doing their whole possessing the puck because they really can't and dominating that way, how do we get back to that? Well, they decide to start hitting a little bit. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a strategy that you just don't see a lot from the Hawks, but Wingles makes a big hit. Panic makes a big hit on a four check that puts the puck loose, gets it to Saad. Saad makes a quick pass to Taze, who rips a one-timer past the goaltender. I don't think he even saw it. And that momentum that was building for the Blue Jackets, the Hawks kind of pull it back a little bit with some great hitting, some great four check, physical play. That was another side that was kind of great to see not really one dimensional team here we got i mean if we want to be physical we can be physical so that was awesome that gets the lead three goals to nothing instead of a 2-1 game hawks seem to get momentum back a little bit here however about half a minute later the blue jackets come on the rush kevney unfortunately blows a tire falls over and sends the defense in a bit of a scramble mode. The Blue Jackets put the puck on net. It hits off Hartman, kind of trickles in, and the Blue Jackets get a goal, kind of a fluky one, and kind of get that momentum right back. Defense has played all, well all game, and I this, this doesn't negate that. It's just, unfortunately, those things happen. It happened at the wrong moment for Kemney. He, he still played a pretty good game, just had unfortunate moment. So it's a 3-1 game. The Blue Jackets are still within scoring distance, still within striking distance, still within possibly coming back distance. But two minutes after that, Patrick Kane has it on his stick and when he does, good things are going to happen, most likely. He puts a backhand sauce pass across the ice between about three guys right on the tape of Jan Rutta. I think surprise Rutta, honestly. But he composes himself, buries the shot for his first NHL goal. Congrats to him. Everyone says you'll remember your first. Well, for Rutta, his first also includes a ridiculous pass from Patrick Kane. I don't think he's going to be forgetting this one anytime soon. Young, aspiring hockey players at home do not try what Patrick Kane did. <laughs> that is not something a lot of people can do. Just backhand sauce pass cross ice between about four guys. I, I don't un I don't understand how these things work, and I'm just gonna believe that there's other forces involved, mostly Kane forces. So the Hawks, with that nice response, are basically saying, Blue Jackets, you're not coming back in this one. They go into the third period up four to one. Not quite on pace for ten goals, but that's all right. I will take it any game. That's for sure. The rest of the game is pretty much the Hawks playing smart hockey, not trying to do too much, just kind of trying to run the clock out. The Blue Jackets are pressing, but they're not really getting a whole lot of great opportunities. When they do, Crawford is stoning them, not really giving them second chances or anything. Very solid effort in goaltending once again by Crawford. And then with about five minutes left or so, Blackhawks have an offensive zone faceoff. Taze kind of wins it, Panic steps in, grabs it and just rips one top shelf. Surprises everyone. I was I was even on that side of the ice. I'm like, what what just happened? He's, he scored? All right, cue Chelsea Dagger. So that was a great way to finish off the game. 5-1, the Hawks win. 
They've scored 15 goals in their first two games. They've only given up two. That's a great ratio. Um, but yeah, what a, what a great game. What a great experience once again. Like I said, if you ever get a chance to go to a game at the United Center, even if you're not a Blackhawks fan, it's something to witness for sure. Next up on the plate, the Hawks play the only other team who has scored 15 goals in the last two games. That would be the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's gonna be that's gonna be quite the quite the matchup. Now the Toronto Maple Leafs, their defense hasn't been as great as the Hawks so far, so I would say the Hawks still have the edge, but it is in Toronto. This will be the first time the Hawks don't play at home this season. This is the first time the Hawks play a team not on the back end of a back-to-back, -back, and also the first time that the Hawks will most likely play the other team's starting goaltender. So we'll see kind of what they're made of, but hey, 82 and 0 is still there. It's still reachable. We're still on pace. Just got to keep going. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts were on the game and the season so far and, and pretty much everything. Let me know in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, whatever. Do what you want to do. I can't make you do anything, but I will see you after the Leafs game.